Let's talk some chess. Continuing our coverage of the FIDE Chess World Cup, this is the quarterfinal, so eight players are remaining. Magnus Carlsen playing with the black pieces in this match. He's playing against Gukesh, who is a 17-year-old Indian grandmaster, um, one of the youngest, I think the third youngest, I looked it up before, third youngest person to achieve the title of grandmaster, so obviously um, a rising star in the chess world. Uh, they will play two games. Gukesh will have the white pieces, and then Magnus will have the white pieces, and um, if it's still tied after that, they will go to a shorter time format. Um, these are classical games, so both players have plenty of time, although there will be some time trouble in this game, uh, and Gukesh opens us up with d4. We have knight to f6 by Magnus, uh, bishop to f4, b6, and knight to c3. So uh, this is the London system, which we saw a lot of in the last World Championship, actually. Um, Magnus here, Fienkettos, his light squared bishop to b7. Uh, f3 by Gukesh e6, uh, pawn to e4, so this e3 move supporting uh, the move to e4. Uh, this e4 square is attacked by Magnus's knight and bishop, um, and uh, you need the the knight, Mag uh, sorry, Gukesh's knight is defending the e4 square, um, but when you play uh, f3, you add another defender to the square, so essentially preparing that e4 move, which uh, Gukesh gets in, and now Magnus plays a6. We have queen to d2, getting the queen off the back rank, connecting it nicely with the bishop on f4, and now uh, d5, Magnus striking in the center. Gukesh castles queenside, Magnus plays bishop to b4, immediately pinning the knight to the queen and preparing to castle kingside, uh, potentially. And Gukesh here plays a3, making this bishop, forcing this bishop to make a decision, do you want to capture or do you want to retreat? Magnus decides to capture the knight on c3, we have queen captures. Uh, D captures on e4, and Gukesh here pushes on, uh, plays d5 here. Uh, Magnus takes with the knight on d5. This uh, actually forks the queen and the uh, knight, uh, sorry, forks the queen and the bishop, but the problem here is that the knight is pinned by the rook to Magnus's queen, so you have to be a little bit careful here. Um, in this case, Gukesh actually plays uh, queen captures on g7. So it may have looked like after this d takes on e4 and Gukesh ignores it and plays d5, knight takes, it may look like Gukesh is down a pawn um, and it looks like this is kind of a scary position because of the fork from the knight, but Gukesh does have this queen to g7 uh, picking up the knight and obviously threatening the rook on h8. Magnus is uh, forced to defend the rook by playing you can do a couple of things here, but the best move is queen to uh, f6. Now attacking the bishop once again with the knight and the queen, unpinning the knight from the rook, so now the knight can freely capture, and of course, uh, most importantly, offering up offering up a queen trade. So <clears throat> Gukesh uh, accepts the queen trade, Magnus takes, and now uh, the knight is no longer threatening the bishop. So uh, first Gukesh plays this uh, e5 move, pinning the knight to the rook, and here Magnus defends with king to e7. So um, not castling here, but the king certainly is pretty safe on e7. And uh, finally, uh, Gukesh takes his pawn back on c7. So after all of that, kind of a nice combination, but the material in the end is equal. Magnus develops another piece, uh, knight b to d7, connecting the two knights, clogging up this open d-file a bit, which is currently controlled by Gukesh's uh, rook. We have bishop uh, retreating to uh, g3, uh, and now uh, Magnus slides the rook over to g8 on this semi-open g-file. Bishop to e2, developing another piece, and now uh, the king retreats here to e8. Um, we'll sort of see the idea behind this move in kind of another line. Well, actually, we'll, we'll just do it here. Um, so instead of bishop to e2, the engine here prefers you play bishop to h4, pinning the knight to the king. Um, it also gets the uh, bishop off of this g3 square in case this knight ever comes to e4. Spoiler alert, it will, because then the knight uh, will land on e4 with, uh, with an attack on the g3 square. So uh, Gukesh, that, that's the move the engine prefers. Instead, Gukesh plays e2, bishop to e2, very reasonable move, developing another piece. Um, and here Magnus preemptively gets out of the pin by playing uh, king to e8. So now there's no bishop to g8 to h4, pinning the knight to the king. We have f, ta f takes on e4, knight takes on e4, and now again, because the bishop hasn't moved, the knight is attacking the bishop on g3, and Gukesh decides to uh, give up the bishop and put, give up the dark squared bishop and put his light squared bishop on f3, um, contesting Magnus's bishop on this long uh, light squared diagonal. We have knight takes on g3, pawn takes on uh, on g3, and it looks like um, uh, Gukesh has just given up a pawn, but if, of course, if Magnus captures, then Gukesh can capture on h7, so no pawns given up just yet. Um, instead, we have uh, bishop captures on f3, and now knight captures on f3, not pawn captures on f3, uh, developing a piece and getting this piece into the game. Magnus expects this pawn will be gone soon anyways. I'm sorry. Gukesh expects, I 
always mix up who's playing with which pieces. Uh, Gukesh expects this pawn will be gone soon anyways, and indeed it is. Magnus captures with the rook on uh, g3, and we have, uh, just like we sort of talked about, uh, rook to h7, picking up the pawn for Gukesh. And here, uh, Magnus just plays uh, king to e7, not capturing the pawn here, because then uh, rook to h8 is quite a nice move. You pretty much have to block with the knight here. Um, to uh, prevent the king from moving away, and, and rook picks up rook. There might be another line I'm even missing, but then after knight to e5, this looks pretty strong for Gukesh, so Magnus didn't want to go into this. I assume this is the strongest line. line. There might be another one, but uh, Magnus, of course, not too materialistic, doesn't care as much about the pawn, instead just brings the king to e7, and now there's no rook to h8 with check. Uh, so now we have knight to d4, uh, getting the knight closer to the enemy king, ideas of knight to c6 with check, um, and knight to e5 by Magnus. Rook to e1, attacking the undefended knight on e5, and now rook to, uh, to g4, offering up a trade of knights. So uh, Magnus, I'm sorry, Gukesh accepts the trade. We have... Uh, uh, rook takes on e5, rook takes on d4, and now rook takes uh, rook back to e2 by Gukesh, protecting these two uh, these two pawns. Rook a to d8 by Magnus, doubling up on the open d file. C3 attacking this rook. Rook runs to f4, but now Magnus has nice control over the d and the f file. And now king to c2, improving the position of the king for Gukesh. Rook to g8, uh, eyeing this uh, lonely pawn here on g2. It is protected by the rook, but now the rook is forced to stay. Um, keep an eye on this pawn. Uh, b4, uh, b5, preventing b pawn from moving any further. And now king to b3 by Gukesh. We have rook f to g4, and now this pawn has a lot of pressure on it, and you obviously don't want to go down a pawn in an end game against Magnus. Um, so for the moment, Gukesh, instead of uh, bringing his rook to h2 and defending this pawn twice and creating two very inactive rooks, instead he keeps this very active rook on the seventh rank and plays rook to f2, and now uh, Gukesh has a two rook threat on the uh, f7 pawn. Magnus, of course, doesn't feel like going into this, doesn't feel like rook captures on g2, g2 only to get rook uh, captures on f7 with check. This looks terrible um, for Magnus, so instead he just plays uh, rook, eight, rook 8 to g7, uh, blocking the path of uh, the rook on h7, and we have a, a trade of rooks here. Uh, and now a4 by Gukesh, f5 by Magnus, uh, and now it's going to become just a classic endgame. Both sides have four pawns, um, and it's going to be a race to see sort of who can promote their pawn faster, who can use their king to uh, push their pawns forward. Um, Magnus has these two very nice pawns on the E and F file. Um, of course, Gukesh has one extra pawn on the king side. I'm sorry, on the queen side. Um, but it's going to be tough for, uh, well, well, we'll just play the game. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. We have A captures on B5, A captures back on B5. And now this is a pretty good pawn for Magnus because it's kind of preventing these pawn, these two pawns from moving forward. Technically, you can play C4, but then you just get B takes on C4, King takes, and now... Uh, I actually didn't analyze this, so I'm not going to say anything about that position, but I, it doesn't work. Uh, so nice to say it doesn't work. Uh, uh, okay, and now uh, we sort of have uh, the, the important moment in the game. Um, you're playing against Magnus, who is extremely, obviously he's a great chess player, but he's extremely precise in the end game. He sometimes plays like an engine, just grinding out these long games, creating advantages from sort of very small edges. Um, and uh, unfortunately here, Gukesh plays the move that begins uh, the, the downfall and begins the, um, the sort of avalanche. So see if you can find the proper move here for Gukesh while I give you a couple of seconds. Did I actually do, did I even do this line? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I misspoke earlier when I said I didn't look at this line. I did. Uh, the proper move here is indeed c4, so ignore what I said uh, a second ago. Sometimes I get confused looking at the different lines. Um, here, Magnus could play rook to g3 with check, um, rook blocks, and now uh, b takes on c4 with check, king takes, rook takes on g2, and now Magnus is up a pawn, um, but this pawn is uh, Gukesh's pawn on b4. Um, kind of has a, a path to promotion um and uh this is a this is a more equal position than what than what happened um because gukesh has this rook to b3 move and now the rook is sitting behind the pawn and it's going to be tough for magnus to stop it so rook to g4 with check king to c5 and now rook back to g8 getting ready to stop the pawn or try to stop it uh b5 rook to c8 with check 
king to d4, and now king to d6. And now it's going to be a case of Gukesh pushing his pawn, these two pawns trying to advance, but Magnus is, I'm sorry, yeah, Gukesh's king will stop, and we'll try to stop those pawns along with the rook. Um, and this is a drawn position, so this is totally fine. Even though Magnus is up a pawn, you can survive in this position and, and all as well. Um, Gukesh doesn't go into this. Maybe he calculated it and didn't like being down a pawn. He's also pretty low on time at this point, so that could be why. I think he had maybe five minutes left on the clock, so that's uh, you know part of it as well. Here he played, instead of this c4 move, he played rook to a2. Um, and it's certainly a reasonable looking idea. He wants to get the rook in behind uh, Magnus's position, check the king, um, and really sort of harry these pawns maybe um, from the rear, uh, but this allows Magnus to play rook to g5, um, and as we'll see, uh, this is a, well, it, we'll sort of see. It's important to get the rook off the seventh rank, um, because now Gukesh plays uh, rook to a7 with check. Again, there there is a a, a better move here. It's, uh, do, 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 do. let me see, do I have it? Where am I in my... Okay, yeah, it's uh, rook to a5, uh, attacking this uh, b5 pawn, threatening to capture this pawn, and then you can just push these two pawns to promotion. Um, here, Magnus would defend by playing f4. You have a discovered defense from the rook to the pawn. Uh, king to c2, king to f6, king to d3, uh, king to f5, the king's sort of moving. Uh, this now abandons the defense of the b5 pawn because the rook is blocked by the king. So uh, rook takes on b5 with check block with e5 and rook to b8. Um, and uh, this is, I think, give me one second. I think this is, yeah. This is still a better position for Magnus because you still have this uh, rook to g3 check. The king sort of has to move away from these pawns and these two pawns are gonna be very difficult to stop along with this rook capturing on g2, uh, which would also come with check. Um, but this is a better chance for Gukesh than sort of what happened. Uh, so let's just go back uh, to see what happened. Instead, he played very reasonable looking move uh, rook to a7 with check, but now this allows Magnus to advance his king into the game. Magnus plays king to f6, and now uh, as these two kings try to sort of oppose each other and push the other one off of the important space in the board, uh, Magnus will have the advantage because this king is starting from a better square. And it looks like they're starting from a similar point, but remember that Gukesh's king cannot come to c4 because Magnus's pawn is cutting it off. So this is a very important pawn in this position, even though it doesn't really look like much. Gukesh's king has to come all the way around, whereas Magnus's king can you know, get to the important squares with less moves. And that's, of course, going to be um, all that matters. So rook to a2 by Gukesh, now sort of trying to uh, hold on, defending the uh, g2 pawn. Uh, and you can sort of see with, you know, with this check, Gukesh achieved nothing but allowing Magnus to move his king up the board. Um, Gukesh has to return the rook to a2 to stay in defense of this g2 pawn because, of course, Magnus is attacking it. But now f4 uh, by Magnus, and now these two pawns are going to be difficult to stop. The rook is forever defending the b5 pawn, and things are going to get tricky. Uh, rook to c2, uh, Gukesh sort of just trying to hold on and, and keep this position uh, stable, but now uh, rook to g3 attacking the c3 pawn, forcing the king or the rook to stay in defense. For now, the king moves away to a2, and now Magnus brings his king to e5. And again, really tough to get this king into the game. It would take many, many moves, uh, but Magnus just needs a couple of moves to get the king into the center of the board, uh, and that begins with king to e5. We have king to b2, king to d5 now, drawing even closer. Uh, rook to d2 check, king to e4, uh, king to b3, and now uh, e5. And now you have the king sort of controlling all of these squares, not letting uh, Gukesh's king get, in, get into the game. It can't get into the game this way anyways, but even now uh, via c2 and d3, the king is cutting off d3 along with the rook. Uh, so basically, you know, there's no way to enter and stop these two pawns from advancing and promoting. Uh, rook to e2, check is played here. Uh, king back to f5, rook to d2, but now just e4 by Magnus. And these are insanely powerful pawns. This pawn is going to be very hard to stop from promoting on e1. Rook to d5 check, king back to f6, which looks like a bit of a strange move. Uh, and now rook takes on b5 for Gukesh. So Gukesh is now up a pawn, um, but these pawns are unfortunately much farther away from promotion than Magnus's pawns. Um, and Magnus here just plays e3. Uh, and Gukesh now uh, plays uh, rook to b6 with check, king to f5, rook to b5 with check, king to e4, rook to b8, and now uh, uh, it's Magnus's move, uh, and he can end the game. <clears throat> he can end the game with the next move. So see if you can find the winning move here for Magnus. While I give you a couple of seconds. Okay, um, it's 
kind of a surprising looking move. Uh, I, you know, when I saw this, I was like, oh, let's play king to d3, but I don't even know if this works. Yeah, that's still okay. It's still fine. Um, but the winning move here is actually the move that Magnus played, and that's e2. This looks like a little bit of a strange move uh, because it does allow um, rook to e8 check. I, I should mention this position. After this e2 move, Gukesh resigned the game, and, and the game is over, and the first game goes to Magnus. So now uh, Magnus will play with the white pieces, and Gukesh has to beat Magnus with the black pieces to stay to push the game to a tiebreak. Otherwise, Magnus will advance to the semifinals. So anyways, um, I was kind of surprised by this move because uh, you have this rook to e8 check, which is skewering the king and the pawn, but this is completely fine because you get king to d3 protecting uh, the pawn, um, uh, and now you don't really have anything you can do. So you can play rook to d8 attacking the king, but the king just goes back to e3, um, and even if the king tries to keep, if the rook tries to keep checking the king, um, eventually because of the coverage of this pawn on f4, you can play king to f2, and now there are no more useful checks. Of course, you can, you know, play rook takes on e2, but then that's not a useful check. So now there are no more useful checks. You can just play b5, but now uh, Magnus, even instead of promoting uh, the queen and not promoting to a knight, instead of promoting to a queen and, uh, you know, taking off the rook, um, instead of even doing that, Magnus has the wonderful uh, rook to e3. This wasn't played in the game, but this is uh, the best sort of option. And now uh, there's no way to prevent uh, e1 with promotion on the next move. You can take the rook, uh, but then you just get whatever you play. You're getting uh, a queen coming up on e1 on the next move. Uh, so that's that's the game. Um, uh, obviously, let me go to the final move. Yeah, that's the final move. Uh, that's the game. Obviously, uh, very tough to play against Magnus. Um, especially in the end game when he just is a precision machine. Um, Gukesh is an, an amazing player, an up-and-coming player, but um, always tough to play against the uh, former world champion, not the current world champion, but obviously on the road to uh, challenge for a world championship again is Magnus. So uh, thanks for watching. Drop a like, drop a subscribe. Let me know of other games you'd like me to review, and we'll see you next time.